Hello, everyone. Anybody who is logging in, it looks like everybody's looks like our numbers are going up pretty quickly here. We had a lot of people signed up today, so I'm excited about that. Hope everybody's Monday is going good. I decided to wear um, sort of an unseasonable color because I was feeling like I wanted it to be spring and not the middle of February. And then of course I have um, my t-shirt that has daily verses that I thought were very SEL for this event. So we'll give everybody one minute to sign in and then we'll get this started. Hi, Mary. And feel free to um, put in the chat where you're from, maybe what grade you teach. Springfield, hello. And Connecticut, that's awesome. Sometimes that chat goes by so fast, it's hard to, fo to follow. Hi, Janice, in Chicago and Pennsylvania. Appleton and Texas. Wow, we got hello from Navajo Nation, Arizona. Nice. So we got tons of you here, and that is exciting. It is 401, so I want to be respectful of everybody's time, including Michigan and North Carolina and Indiana, and I'll stop now. But um, welcome, you guys. It's another Maker Monday, and I am Chris Bakke. I am Customer Engagement Manager here at NASCO Education. And with me today is um, for round two. Uh, I haven't invited too many back for a second time, so you must be pretty important when that happens. But Heather did such a great job the last time on social emotional learning that I invited her back because there's a lot going on right now and she has a ton to offer. And we just really wanted to make sure that we were connecting our educators with social emotional learning. So with me today is Heather McCutcheon. She is art educator in New York. She is Youth Art Month coordinator, and I say that because we are close to celebrating Youth Art Month in March. She is an award-winning um, Youth Art Month coordinator, has won the Award of Excellence for 2021, and we're so proud of her. She also was the um, one of the finalists for the Educator, not just Art, Educator of the Year for the whole state of New York. So with that, I will say welcome, Heather, and I'm going to let you take over the stage. Thank you, Chris. Um, I know I am excited to be here and to be able to share and <laughs> work with all of you. Um, I see some of my favorite amazing people from New York, so thank you for those shout outs. I have my little chat box open, so hopefully I can answer any questions while we're going to if possible. Um, I have a ton of different social emotional things to talk about. I have books, projects, lessons, ideas. Um, I am very passionate about being able to take care of our well-being, but also be able to take care of our, our students' well-being. There's so many things right now um, in our world, in our lives, um, not just COVID related, but just a lot going on. I know I feel it. I know a lot of you guys are feeling it also. So I have lots of different things to share. Honestly, I have probably more than our time here, um, but I'm definitely excited to share and just get right into it. So I have lessons. I'm going to share with you one of my first and favorite lessons. I know I did talk about it uh, last time also. And um, it is about the strengths because I feel that our strengths are so important for us to know what our strengths are. And that is something that students um, have a hard time with. And honestly, a lot of us as adults have a hard time with strengths. If you ask someone, well, what is your strength? People have a hard time with it. Um, I know I do. So with that lesson, um, we start with a strength assessment. 
So the assessment that um, we worked with is the high five assessment. It is a free assessment that you can do online. Um, I've also taken the Gallup Strengths Assessment. And with that, you get your top five strengths. So some of the strengths could be a coach. Some of the strengths that you would have could be a chameleon. So the chameleon is an interesting one that I've had students get all the time. And the chameleon isn't necessarily like a sneaky, slithering um, being. It's more of that you adapt yourself to different situations. So with that strength test, I also try to incorporate core content things like we practice how to use oil pastels, we practice how to do watercolor, and then the students really dive into those strengths that they have, those top, top five that they're given. And then they have to create an art piece off of at least one of those strengths that they're given. So I have a couple examples here. Um, this one, I'd love to have you guess, but I don't have the list of all of the strengths. So this image here, this one was done by a ninth grader and this strength was a coach. So she had created this image and used oil pastels and watercolor to be able to create this image. And even on here, she said, she's like, I don't like sports. I'm not a coach, like I don't do that. And I kind of said, well, what does coach mean? And coach means that you help others. You help them see their full potential. So there on here, she created all these different papers with different names to be able to say that she's helping coach those other people. I do see there's a question about the link. So the link is high five test. It literally is high and then a number five and test. And I can always type that in after. I have another example here. This is actually from a senior that I had in ninth grade and had to repeat again. And when I had him as a senior, it was one of those amazing moments that I got to talk to him and really um, get to know him even better because he's very quiet in ninth grade. So this one was a commander. So as you can see the dark image and then he added a few trees. So with this strength test though too, like I had students fill out a document, they all worked together. They were able to show like what strengths they had in common and they had to talk about it. Um, some of those things are really important to our well-being, but it's hard for students to talk with others, especially when it's about their strengths or about themselves. Um, so that helps with that like emotional um, identity when you're talking about it. One, getting to know themselves, but being able to share who they are. So I find that that was that strength test has been one of my favorites. Um, I share it with everyone, uh, finding out about the strengths. And actually, our juniors and our seniors just did every kid in the school a strength test. So it was awesome because I kept going around to each kid. I'm like, what strengths did you get? How did how did you do it? And they're kind of like, oh, I don't understand this. And once they dug into it more and really talked to people, they were pretty proud of those strengths. But now the hard part is, is now you can define those strengths. How do you use them to be a better person, to be a better human? Chris, as you always say, I love that word human. I use it all the time because we are, we're humans. So we need to be better humans for each other and for ourselves. So let's see, I have another lesson that I did um, shortly after, I have not done it this year again, um, but I did it shortly after the strengths. We actually had some um, virtual guests um, what do you want to say? Not artists, but they were performers, but they came in and they are about what is your superpower? How can you be a super, superhuman to be able to help others? And a lot of their message is about like being a superhuman and pulling people away from the bad stuff, pulling them away from the bullies and trying to like help others that everyone can be a superhuman. So I did a lesson about the superpower. And again, we talked back about the strengths that they had, but like talking about, well, if you had a superpower, what would it be? And I always think about food because I really like food um, as I'm sure many of you do. So I always, you know, talk about food. I have food here in my classroom. I always have granola bars or some type of snack because I want to make sure anybody that's hungry, you know, has something. So I decided that my superpower would be that I feed people. Like if I could do anything, I would love to shoot 
food out of my hands and just be like, here, you get a cheeseburger, you get an ice cream cone. Like, I would love that. So we had a discussion, the students, you know, started thinking about what their superpower was. And we created a digital animation of their superpower. So I have mine. I hate to share other students just because we did it last year. Um, but I did, we do a 2D version. We decide on a background. So something that is very simple, but has shading and value in it and an empty space for yourself. Because the second part is you take a green screen of you and pose yourself right on top and then animate it into whatever the superpower is. So I have my, my video here and I'm just gonna show you the example. So I have myself right in the front and I am basically with my superpower and I have it animated to be able to shoot out food. So if I hit play, it will be definitely hard to see on the screen, but I have it moving and I have like apples and ice cream and pizza flying out of my hands. So we had multiple parts to this. We talked about animation. We did flip books at first. We practiced different things. We did them on the iPads, but again, incorporating a 2D in the background and adding some technology components to it. But also again, that sense of identity, like talking about more what they could do. One of the students last year, she said she wanted to cure cancer. And I was just like in the corner trying not to ball because I'm like, that would be an amazing superpower for a ninth grader to come up with that. Like I already have the tears in my eyes to think about that. But like her superpower was to be able to cure cancer and her design was very interesting in the background. Um, and then she animated herself in just basically like a healing hand. So that... Again, having the students um, have an idea of, you know, their, who they are and what they could do to be able to help others. That's a huge thing. Like, we don't have that in, you know, let's just draw. Like, but being able to give them a goal, an idea, um, that really does help make a whole. So moving to my next. Heather, I was just going to say, if you need a drink of water or just a momentary break, I love that so much on the strengths and the superpowers, like so fabulous, <clears throat> such good self-awareness in there too, you know, mm -hmm. like that just is a great place to start in knowing who you are and then pointing it outwards. So good, good stuff. But if you need a break or a moment to get a drink of water, let me know and I will go off mute to give you that break. <laughs> I'm okay, I'm red because I get nervous. As we say that that is my camouflage. If anyone knows <laughs> me, they know I turn a little red. Um, but yes, as you said, the self-awareness, but also self-management, to be able to like really manage these daily tasks and trying to understand what's next. So I have like all of these different ideas and all of these words that I've got. That like going around in my head when we talk about SEL. Um, so I have like goals are important. Risk taking is important. Resilience and ownership is important. We have self-advocacy, empathy, time, even time to experiment, explore, and discover. Like these are all those words that again, like pop in and you'll see, like I have my sketchbook back here that I wanted to talk about too. I have all of these amazing things that go along with SEL that always come to mind or we are always talking about. So I do have another lesson I wanted to show. Um, the next one was the intuitive painting. So that um, my dear friend Michelle has done for myself. Actually, I have a painting right here that I uh, created as a, um, as a time lapse even of an intuitive painting that I did myself because again, we need these for us. But I've brought into the intuitive painting into my classroom and my students are not just painting, but now they are working on, you know, watercolor and pen on top of things for intuitive painting. And then like this one student said, well, I want to push it further. What else can I do? So she added three dimensional 3D prints in here. So we have butterflies 
and leaves that are added as more of a 3D effect. So we're pushing it a little bit further with that intuitive painting and that idea of, you know, letting go a little bit, experimenting, because that's really like a hard thing to do. I get that all the time with students, like, I want to do A, B, C, or like two plus two equals four, like, tell me what to do. And sometimes when you have that extra exploration or experimentation, it's hard, but I can't even tell you like these two students, they did them at different times. And like the student did it first. And then this one said, oh, I really, really want to do one. That's so interesting. And now they're both doing something again, like off to the side. So it's amazing how one thing can roll into something else. Um, that ownership of creating a piece that is just true to them and true to that feeling. Um, if you don't know the intuitive painting, definitely look it up. It is amazing. I, every chance I get, I ask my friends, um, especially Michelle, to like, can you please do an intuitive painting? We really need it. Like, I need it. Um, often I end up crying. Those of you that know me are not surprised. Um, but it is just an amazing, an amazing time. Um, is the artwork on canvas? You can do it on anything like this piece back here. I did on a larger canvas, um, but these pieces are just on watercolor paper. So what type of painting? So it's called intuitive painting. I love having the chat open. So I hope that's okay. Cause I'm trying to, you know, do it all. I'm doing my best to answer, and so is Abby, but yeah, no, coming from you is great. <laughs> One of the questions was, could they have this emailed to them? You can send your email to me. Um, it's kbaki at nascoeducation.com. I will put that in, but I'm happy to answer any questions or share Heather's information with you. Yeah. But feel free to send it. And we've got the handout to, that has all the yeah. links on it. Yeah, that handout is lovely. I even go back and reference it sometimes because there's the links that are really nice. Um, but it also has, you know, I have some web-based resources on that document, plus a whole bunch of suggested books that I'm going to show you too. Um, so the next thing on my list, because like I said, I have my whole classroom is kind of set up for this. Um, I have my coloring book. So again, last year, uh, my students were having a little bit of a hard time with COVID and they're just like, all right, my can, can I just leave color? And I'm like, well, yes, like that's great, but why don't we make this more for us or more unique? So we ended up putting together, or I ended up putting together, but they ended up creating a Herkmer logo at her Herkmer coloring book. So we have this coloring book and the students ended up creating an image and then I photocopied and put it together. And my wonderful principal who is probably listening right now, thank you, Mary, um, ended up saying, well, why don't we get this found? And actually all of the teachers in the building and students that wanted it received it. And I got a donation of crayons from one of the local charities here. So, oh, and I I'm love it, I have my sticky note. I'm just going to quick throw into yes, like really big kudos to your principal for such amazing support. I love that she recognizes the amazing stuff that you are doing because you are second to none, but that kind of support is felt so much by families and my grandkids are in school right now and you can feel that within a school community. So Kudos to both of you for such a strong relationship. That is so phenomenal. Yes, it is amazing. So I just have to do a shout out too. Like I did a page too, and I even did my puppy, Walter. So again, like part of the social emotional learning, you're, you know, getting to know these students, you're getting to know, uh, build relationships. I want them to know about me. So like I talked about my dog, Walter, and this is Walter in my book as Example, and everybody gets to see it. And I even wrote down at the bottom the questions dog Walter. Um, that again trumps everything. Relationships, getting to know the kids. Like my principal and I were just talking, and we emailed a student just a little while ago to check on her. Like that is what trumps everything. Like that is what's important is these kids 
and getting to know them and all of these things I've done, like the strength lesson, the superpower lesson, even the intuitive lesson, I get to know more about them. And we have those discussions. So like, it's a sneaky way of doing it, but it's also really awesome because we get to build those relationships and that's number one. So my next lesson I have over here is the one that um, we had worked together, which with NASCO to produce the lesson plan um, about creating your own logo. So I've been doing this lesson for quite a few years in a whole bunch of different um, ways. So currently my ninth graders are doing this lesson also. So I borrowed their sketchbooks <laughs> and I have some examples. So I work constantly in sketchbooks with my students. I actually have multiple and I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. But I find that sketchbooks are important at all levels. Um, this is a sketchbook from a ninth grade student. And this is his mind map. So this student's mind map, I tried to pose them to find 15 images or 15 things about them. This is hard. 15 things is a lot of time. It's a lot to do. Um, so this student did the 15 and then I, from there, they have to choose two or three things to incorporate into it and they have to, um, create a logo. So this student created this logo and it is of a sneaker with his basketball numbers. And then there's a basketball hidden and there's a few other things that kind of talk about who he is. So he created that logo and he's going to use this on a variety of things. But like just this week, we use the vinyl cutter that's here and he's creating his own sticker. So like an image that he can use. I actually have my own one that I did with them. I updated my logo and I actually was gonna wear this shirt because we also make shirts, but I thought it would be a little too much for today, even though my students did dare me to wear it, but I guess I didn't have the guts to wear it the whole time. But I created my logo because I really like the hexagon. Um, and the B pattern as I have in all of my artwork. Oh, well, not all of my artwork, but most of my artwork lately. And I'm a little obsessed. So I created that. And I have students creating shirts and designs and all of those kind of things, 3D prints. So we have a 3D printer, so keychains. And again, these are my examples because I can never get them to stay here because like as soon as they make it, they want to run off. We even um, have, an engraver here, it's a Glowforge engraver. So we made little business cards. So they're kind of cool. And I took the engraver one step further that doesn't have anything to do with the lesson plan, but I ended up creating with my students a business card with a QR code and the QR code goes to their link tree that has all of their artwork and their Twitter and their Instagram. And mine actually goes to all of that too. So I made a, made the same idea. And you could do this with anything. That's it's just genius. It's amazing to be able to share. Yeah. This actually came from another colleague too. And I just kind of like ran with it. I'm like, oh yes, I need this. And now I have this like in my wallet anytime. I can pull it out and say, scan it. You can see my work. Actually, if you scan this right now, I had the link to be able to get onto this to sign up. So I had that right at the bottom to show the students you could add any type of link. So. Love, love, love that. And no doubt they do too. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely like my seniors in my AP class, every single one of them ended up creating this that day because they were so excited. So a little backstory, I teach um, six different classes in six different periods. So I teach art eight, studio arts, advanced art, ceramics, sculpture and AP. Yes, that's six. So I teach all of those classes because we do have a smaller school. I love it. I love being able to do a dynamic um, experience throughout the day. It's exhausting. Um, but again, I wouldn't be able to do some of these amazing things if I only taught one course. So I do get to have some excitement. So the next thing I wanted to share was sketchbooks. So sketchbooks, like I said, are really important in my curriculum. Um, I did teach K-12 for eight years, my first eight years of teaching. And I never did sketchbooks in the elementary school. Like I've been a real component of sketchbooks the last few years, 
Um, and I think if I ever did teach elementary school again, I do miss the little kids, but I love working with the older kids. But if I ever did, I would probably do bring in sketchbooks too, because I feel that those are so important. One, they're helpful when there's extra time. <laughs> if there's an extra five minutes, it's like, all right, draw in your sketchbook. But two, there's like so much more to sketchbook than just like drawing. So in the sketchbook, I have I have them do everything. They take notes sometimes if it's about an artist. Um, they end up drawing in them if there's free time. They end up collaging. Um, I've actually taken a few workshops with Eric Scott. Absolutely love Eric Scott. Actually, he did a workshop with my students even a couple of months ago. Uh, he came in virtually as a guest artist. It was amazing. Um, and on my list of books, uh, his book is one of those also, because it's just one of those things to be able to step out of your comfort zone and really work in a book. So I show the students, again, my sketchbook, like this is one of the things I did with Eric, when you start with a word and you brainstorm. And that's sometimes where I've got with those mind maps of that brainstorming. But I also, not every Wednesday, but some Wednesdays to break up the week, I have a sketchbook prompt and they're just on Google Slides. Like I printed them out. Yes, Eric Scott is awesome. <laughs> yes, Shelly, I see that he is great. Um, I printed out my slides just because I wanted to be able to review them with you. And I've gotten these prompts from multiple places. Like I've gotten them from my book here, the Journal Fodder Junkies. I've also gotten them from fellow colleagues or like our last NYSADA board meeting, we ended up doing this one right here. So I basically had brought this in too. So this prompt says, which blob best describes you, how you feel today and at this moment? Draw your blob, also give it a setting. So I've prompted my students sometimes on Wednesdays with these different prompts here in their sketchbook. Another one is about moods and emotions. So what mood defines you today? Another I have is a to-do list because I don't know about any of you here, but I do know I have a to-do list for right now. I have a to-do list, you know, an extended to-do list. And then sometimes I even get home and I have to like rewrite my to-do list. So I have multiple to-do lists. But this prompt here is take a sticky note, write at least five things down on your to-do list and then create a page reflecting them. So why is that important? It one helps people with goals and lists, but it also helps them to be more aware of what's going on and reflect on things <laughs> and to somewhat be an adult. I see I have a few people that are saying they love to do lists, to do lists also. They're hard, but it's something that it seems to get you, you know, more on track. Um, my last one I'm going to share with you here it says, How can you be kinder to yourself? That's all that one slide was that day in January. How can you be kinder to yourself? And again, sometimes I have blank pages or blank stares, but that's okay. Hopefully they were internally processing those things. So again, those sketchbooks, like I have, I always have sketchbooks here. My students have the sketchbooks and even kids that, you know, I've had in previous years, they'll come up to me and ask me, do you have a sketchbook? And I honestly give them to them, so hopefully it's okay. Um, I, I want them to have that. Like if that's what they need to express themselves or need to write things down, like I end up passing those sketchbooks out if somebody needs them because it is, it's important to them. So on my list of things, I also have one more lesson. It's not totally a positive one, but it's also again, something that sometimes we need we need to get those things out. Um, in my obsession of learning about these things, um, I read a lot. So I have a lot of books. And like I said, I'll review a couple of them. But I was actually reading one last night and it was talking about the ACEs. Like if you haven't done any studies about ACEs, I think it's really important. Um, the adverse childhood experiences are ACEs. And there are some specific things that happen during childhood that can affect like the developmental 
and the emotional um, capabilities of people. It's just, they're things that happen. And I know looking at them, <laughs> they're, they're a lot. Like it says household challenges, abuse, and neglect. Um, when it goes down to household challenges, there's domestic violence, substance abuse, mental illness, the list goes on. Obviously, we can figure out abuse. Um, they state that 67% of the population has at least one of those ACEs. And the more of those things you have, the harder it is. The harder it is to be able to graduate, the harder it is to stay away from substance abuse yourself. So there's all of these things that can affect us. And yes, my sketchbook prompts mostly are positive, but you know, you can find it sometimes in a negative way. But the one lesson that is twisted a little bit is called a burden sculpture. And again, this is one I've gotten from a friend of mine. So I, I'm not the one who, you know, made all of these amazing things, but I definitely tried to incorporate these in. So the burden sculpture has to do with something that is a burden on yourself. Like how do you have this weight on you and what is affecting you. So again, we don't talk about the burden. The student does not have to even speak the burden, but they do have to reflect on it in their sketchbook. They have to, you know, talk to someone, it might be a trusted adult about that burden. And then they have to create a wire sculpture that is in Giacometti's um, form. So I have one right here. And this is, this is actually from a straight A student kind of falling apart now but I do this with sculpture students a straight A student and the person is juggling all of these things so there's books here and then the student was in basketball and they have a calendar and a to-do list even <laughs> so talk about that to-do list but I know it's probably hard with my painting in the background to see this but this piece was that student's burden so again being able to have the students reflect and get out of their comfort zone sometimes is important. Like that's a hard thing to do. And I've known that student since kindergarten, that burden. Um, for her, I'm not shocked. Like when she talked about it to me because she felt comfortable, I was like, I get that. Like I have those burdens too sometimes because I'm always doing something. But that is also who I am and that's what makes me me. So it's very interesting to really like take that time to create and do it not to say in a negative way you're just expressing something that sometimes can be hard to talk about through something like that so aside from all of these projects because i have multiple ones i always like to be able to say that i give my students choice and time to be able to reflect on things too so the piece that i have here in the background is it's a start it is not finished by any means. Um, but this is supposed to go along with angel wings. The student had lost a very close friend to her um, in a car accident last year. So this is how she is processing the death. She hasn't talked much about it. I've only seen works of art. I know the girl's name and I know it happened, but I don't know much. So it's, it's interesting to see these pieces coming out of that. What a great also, opportunity. Yeah. I mean, like those two things, because because you are right, you know, you can't always just talk about happy good things because we don't have happy without sad. And the importance of being able to process grief and other things like that is so important. Really impressed. Thank you. Just yeah. wanted to slide that in. Yeah, no, that's because it's and I done in such forgot. a safe way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I forgot I also have another piece. We did the same idea, but instead I, I had them do their fears. So instead of a burden, we did fears that year. And the one student was afraid, like deathly afraid of spiders. So she made this huge spider. And that's why it's still here because she could not take it home. <laughs> I mean, you might be able to even see the dust on this, but created this huge spider. But again, was like so deathly afraid of the spiders that it stayed here. Um, again, that one came out really interesting too to see like the different things that people were saying. It just was amazing. So another idea that I've done with ceramic students um, is creating flower pots 
that have, and I've worked with, uh, we're doing a lot here with interdisciplinary connections and connecting different um, content areas. So this is actually a plant that came from the agriculture teacher. And um, my students, this one was actually my example, because again, they took all the amazing things. Um, but this was a piece that I created to coincide with the plant that she gave us and she taught us all about. And then the students either took them home with them, or if they didn't want them, they had to put them in another teacher's classroom and take care of them. So building relationships with other teachers. Um, if anyone knows me, this is amazing that the plant is this large because it started with one little thing. My husband would laugh and say he couldn't believe it's still alive. Um, because I'm not good with keeping plants alive. But it is interesting to have the students do that. And it, we did, um, every student in one of my classes created a piece and took care of it right before COVID. So it was kind of a bummer because when everything shut down, the plants did end up dying. But being able to take care of something is truly an important thing. So I'm just looking around because I, again, my brain, if you saw my classroom, <laughs> my brain is, this is how my uh, classroom is. So just as I saw your post, Chris, um, the other day, I have a neurographic art and I love how you put it, something about like the brain, everything is all over the place. So these are really good lessons to be able to do. I write down, I have the students write down, again, something that's bothering them or something that is um, just hardship right now underneath and then they create on top of it. And then- Neurographic has been very popular. I love it. And honestly, it's a really good thing if you accidentally go remote for a day, if there's an issue with weather or busing, um, that is a really good thing to do um, and easy to do, even if kids don't have much than a pencil, because you can add value, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. I'm laughing because I just happen to have a piece sitting on this desk and it's just easy when a Zoom is going on just to listen and do neurographic art too. It's mm -hmm. so calming. Yeah, no, I love it. So to switch gears, um, one of those things again about SEL and understanding more about ourselves is to be able to understand things with our community too. So I've been working with the local coffee shop to be able to create coffee sleeves. And the coffee sleeves are going out on their coffee that the students created and drew. So that is, again, something I got from one of my amazing art teachers here in New York uh, State. And my students created a design, which this is what the coffee sleeves look like. And then they painted on the front of the coffee sleeves. This is actually the logo because I'm doing something else. And they go out in the community. So connecting the community, connecting the students to bigger than what's just in this room has more meaning. So um, connecting the community through murals too. I've done multiple murals within the building, um, outside of this building is another way to, again, connect and build community within our larger community. So I wanted to share that. And I have one more kind of my love, but it doesn't have to do with art. But when I found out about it, it was like a light bulb moment. So what these are, are little cards that I had created. Um, I took our school logo and I made a design. And these are, it says a special note from Herkimer Junior Senior High School in four. So what these are, are these are note cards to send specifically to students. We end up having envelopes down in the main office and we have lots of these already printed out and cut and they are for all teachers to send them out to students and to make sure that we may we get, we have every student because that's important we don't want to miss anybody out or we don't want to miss anyone or leave anyone out um we have the labels for the students i have one right here i'll just make sure i kind of cover up so we have labels already printed of every single student in the grade level and teachers pull the label. So once we get through all of the labels, we'll print them again and hopefully reach students again. So this is something nice. We put the kid's name right on the bottom and then we have like a written note on the back and they go directly to the student. Like it doesn't say parents, it's right to the student. And I can say my, my own son received one of these 
like a month ago. And I knew what it was before he did, because obviously I helped make it. And I was like, so proud. I was in the corner, just like watching him open it. And I couldn't wait to read this nice, positive thing that a teacher had sent. It's again, building those relationships, but also like showing these students like, hey, I see you. Um, it's just one of those nice things. Uh, just like I read in the book, one of the best things that we can do is having a safe and welcoming environment, being able to talk to the students, like greeting them at the door. Like I know that's not easy to do all the time, but being able to have that helps with their social and emotional. They want to be here. They love the room. Um, as I was talking to Chris earlier, like one of the things that I like to do is have ownership of this room. Like, yes, I decorated back here. This painting is from an art, art teacher friend. I have like all their things here, but the ceiling tiles, and I'm, hopefully I won't make you sick, but the ceiling tiles in my classroom here are painted by the senior. And like I have stools, the stools are again painted by the students. So they're taking ownership in this room. Like this is not just my classroom, this is their room. You can find, if you look in here, it's very messy. However, they're all student projects. The student projects line the walls, the student projects are in the back. Um, so it's kind of a chaos, but it's also, it's theirs, it's their environment and they can feel proud to be in here. Um, I think that's really important too. And it might be, I'm, I'm probably preaching to the choir here. I'm sure all of you agree and do the same thing. But it's one of those things that gets like set off to the side, like, oh, I got to finish this real quick when the bell rings. And there's kids just walking in and they see me busy rather than I'm at the door and I can just say hello. Like, how big is it? Yes, Kim, creative chaos. That is definitely my room in here. It's creative chaos. Um, so it's like so important to be able to have those things, uh, to be able to have time for those students to be able to explore their passions. Um, another thing that I do are passion projects. So I have that on my list. That actually is my first thing. I don't have anything physically to show you because again, students take those, but like I gave them a chance to project about their passion um, and share with the whole class and create an artwork about what their passion is. And that's a hard thing when you say like passion, um, but it's something that you just really love. Like I really love teaching and I really love being able to know who my students are and letting them figure it out through all of these awesome things. Like a student made a t-shirt on Friday, put it right on. Like how amazing that was her logo, her design that she sketched for weeks and put it on. Like that is what we do every day. Like that is why we do what we do. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you are all of the books that I have. So again, I am a little bit of obsessive with reading. I actually hate reading. I know that sounds weird. Like I am not a reader, but when I can learn more about these topics, I really like it. Uh, so I have the latest one I started to read just yesterday um, is Improving Every Lesson Plan with SEL. So this one is more for SEL in general. So this does not have to do with art teaching at all, like it, but there are some really good things, good reminders. As I said, I have this list, like some of the things that like I thought of is like those outcomes or those aha moments are really important. Or praise, praise is very powerful. It's like we do it all the time, like, oh, that's really neat, or oh, I like this. But it is, it's very powerful. Um, this is a book that I know, Janice, you were with me. I saw Janice was on, um, that we had learned about this summer. And this is a really interesting book. As you can see, I have a few things um, noted, um, but these are definitely art related. And then on my list there, I have, I, I think like 10 at least, of all these different books that really help with mindfulness and, um, the sketchbook journals, again, how important those things are. And then on that sheet too, I do have web-based resources that I added and some YouTube videos, like mindful walking, mindful eating. Uh, I know I went to Hawaii 
pre-COVID and that's when I was reading up about all mindfulness and I was never more in the moment than I was when I was on that vacation because I kept reading like you need to be in the moment you need to be mindful and I even went skydiving and I made it through and the two gentlemen my husband and friends um, didn't do so well my husband actually got sick and I was just like that was the best thing in my life well aside from my kids but um, so yeah like books ideas I I just I can't get enough. This is my next book that I'm going to be reading. Some colleagues and I are reading this. So the Zen teacher, creative focus, simplicity, and tranquil in the, or tranquility in the classroom. So I'll let you guys know how this is. If anybody um, has questions or ideas or wants to reach out to me, um, that paper has my Twitter account and Instagram um, and email is open. Oh, I, Tim, you've read it. Okay, I'm excited to read it. So, um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, thoughts, or ideas, I think I went over everything I have in my room right now. That was fabulous. So, so good. And it is, I mean, that, I don't want to call it a worksheet. The handout is so chock full of more information than they can probably even do in an entire year. I, you're so right though, about so many of the things like when I was learning art, I, I was, I was, I got my job here because I thought, oh my gosh, it'd be great to sell crayons and markers and stuff like that. And I didn't really think of myself as an artist because I had a brother who could draw your face. And so my thought was, well, Rob is an artist and I am not. And then I met, you know, 90,000 art teachers that said, of course, you're an artist. And so then I got to play and do, and now I just do it because I can, and it's so much fun. And anytime an art teacher compliments my work, oh, it feels so good because you're, because you're the expert, you know, in a student's brain, you're the expert. And so there's something to be said about praise from somebody who is the expert at something. So that is very cool. <clears throat> the collaborative stuff is fantastic because it truly does elevate art education in your class, in your school, and in your community. The, the coffee holders, that's genius because yeah. now, <laughs> now everybody who gets those looks at it and realizes that art is important in school, or it might not even connect with them. But then later when somebody talks about their kid and doing art and whatever, they might be like, hey, you know, I got this coffee this morning, or, you know, every day I get this coffee, I got a new kid's thing on there. It's so cool. And how, how much fun does it feel to have your art somewhere other than just at school or on your parents' refrigerator? You know, it, it makes you feel like a real artist. Does anybody have questions? We are doing pretty good for time. We have about 13 minutes, but does anybody have any specific questions for Heather? We have, oh, that's scary. My thing just came up. It says battery low. So be, re be ready, everybody, for this <laughs> to crash. No, I'm kidding. I'm sure we have plenty of time. So next thing that I was going to say is if some of you have said you would like the worksheet emailed to you, I'm happy to do that. So kbaki at nascoeducation.com. The second thing that I was going to say is if you would like the first session that Heather did with us where she talks a little bit more about the Passion Project, send me an email and I will send you that link eventually we are hoping to have all of our webinars on a teacher resource page that will be free to teachers to use. And we're looking at a launch date that soon, and I'm probably in all kinds of trouble for telling all of you that, but just stay tuned. Um, and just let's just keep it to us 47 people that are on right now. <laughs> That's a joke. So um, who printed the coffee labels? 
the coffee shop or the school? Uh, we did. We have an engraver here. So I actually did these for him. And what I'm doing now, because my students printed, or they painted on the front and they designed the front. And I already gave him those ones. And on the back, we put like, Herc Pride and Share With Us made by Herkmer students. So that's why I had the engraver in my room. So when I gave him the ones my students created, he actually asked, you know, is there any way you can help me with putting the logo on the front? And I'm working with the other teachers to create on the back Herkimer favorite memories, the English department is doing. Um, the local history class is doing our Herkimer, um, like Herkimer history. And then our food class are doing a QR code to like their favorite recipes and things that they're working on. So again, working with the other teachers to create these kind of things. And then my students, again, will dazzle them up and make them more interesting. But did he actually give you the, the actual holders? He gave me these. Yes. He gave me the a plain box of 200 and, Very yep, cool. yep, and said, here, <laughs> go ahead. How about advice on working with ELL students? And that is English language learners, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I would say a lot of that is too, again, with a sketchbook, if you ha you're having a hard time with that communication, that sketchbook is really important because if you hand that sketchbook and some supplies, there's so many different things that they might be able to do and create even without work. Um, we have a few students here. I have one in my study hall that is having a difficult time and just came here. And um, I think, honestly, being able to hand this like blank page and supplies and see what what they do is huge. Um, are you going to be able to ask those questions or those prompts? Probably not right this moment, but I'm sure with giving that blank paper. The fact that you are visual educators helps tremendously with that. And so sometimes to just some things that I have heard, sometimes to just learning some key phrases for, from, that, from that student's um, native language is helps tremendously as well. But you're right, just giving them the tools sometimes is enough for you to be able to see, or even for you to sort of, uh, you know, pictorially show what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? We do have a few more minutes. Um, while I let you think and type, next month in April, we are having Dr. Mary Hefferly from the University of Wisconsin-Madison who works with art education and art education students talk about um, direct and choice-based art. And not in a way of one or the other, but just talking about the pros and cons of both and the need and time for each. It was a workshop that I took at Wisconsin Art Education Association Conference that was wonderful, so much information, and she has done a lot of research, great things that I think if you come in, whether you are a teacher, a teacher that does all choice-based and like teaching artistic behavior, or if you're very foundational, it's really mind-opening to see the mix of the two and to see the importance and value. So hopefully you will all come to that too. If you are signed up for this email, you should get the next email that says when that Maker Monday is happening. I don't have a link yet, but we will get that out in the form of an email. And again, you can always email me. Heather, what is, what do you think you're very favorite, if you could only do one of the sort of, and I know all your lessons really center around social and emotional learning, but if you could only really pick one to say, this is the one that you really have to do, it gets like the best results, which one it, would you say it is? So I am tied between my strengths lesson and the logo, like creating your personal logo. 
I think that the strengths lesson is really important because the students are really digging into who they are um, and having, again, those connections with each other. But the logo is just something amazing that people don't get to normally do. Be able to like make a brand for themselves um, I guess I do have to jump into the logo because again, it's about branding yourself and what you want people to see about you and who you really are. So yeah, I'm like looking between my two project examples here <laughs> and I definitely, I, I would, I have to say like the logo and the branding. Cause I think that that's really important. And again, I've done it at all different levels, um, with different types of classes and some produce different things like 3d prints and shirts and Yes. stickers and then others have just like I've seen uh one of my former students she uses it on her Twitter handle and her Instagram handle and on her artwork so like it's definitely um something that can go with the students too so it can grow with them I love that and I love that in the lesson plan that you wrote for us is that we just went pretty simple in terms of colored pencil, but I like the beginning of mind mapping and saying who you are and how interesting it was that like sometimes students would just limit themselves because they're like, they think very school oriented, like, oh, I'm a basketball player or, you know, I'm in show choir or, you know, I like science or, you know, whatever it is. And you're like, okay, beyond that. So that is really, I, I had fun just while I was helping put it together too. Just the mind mapping of it is very cool. Um, logo printmaking project, somebody else has done. Yeah, I bet kids do yeah. love it because when you're, when you're connecting something from yourself, you just get that sense of pride. Plus, you're learning the skills of creating something, and that feels really good, too. So I love that. We only have just a few more minutes left. So if nobody has any questions, we'll give you a couple minutes back of your time, because I know that you are all working so hard right now, and there's so many obstacles out there make sure that you do take some time for yourself too and just keep breathing and keep communicating with each other and reaching out. I am always willing to encourage somebody, send me an email if you're feeling down and I will be able to give you a thousand reasons why you're the most important person in the school. So Heather, you yep. have, made, you go ahead. I was just gonna say, can I just leave you guys with that? So take time for yourself, experiment, explore, um, discover your passions and your strengths. So I think that that's also, like I said, those times for me are huge. Um, I don't get them as much uh, cause I am a mom and a teacher and I, I have to be busy, it's my personality. But when I have those times to be able to like, experiment and explore and find for myself like it's really important that we do that too so well that is a perfect ending to a perfect session lots and lots of thank yous you're phenomenal and I can only imagine the teacher that did win the educator of the year they must be crazy good too <laughs> so yay New York you guys are doing stuff right so Thanks, everybody. Keep coming back and just keep teaching art. We definitely need you. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.